Well, welcome back to the show. Today is a special one. We have Sammy Robinson from Voice of Revival and Red Zone with us to talk about some of the exciting things happening in Canada this summer. Faith, family, football. We just did a really quick question, like how many kids suffer with anxiety, suffer with depression? 90% of the kids put their hand up. It hit me what we've come out of in this last season. Young people looking for answers. For us, the most important thing was our spirituality and our relationship with Jesus, because we know that there's so many times in our lives that Jesus Christ has helped us. Over 85% of these kids they stood up to say, I want to walk, you know, in this place of, of figuring out who Jesus is. How do I follow him? And it was so amazing. Well, it's the summertime and we hope you're enjoying every single minute of it. Here at Faithteen TV, as you know, we're often hitting the harder issues shaping our nation head on, but we're also always looking for ways to encourage you, our viewers, because the good news is that it isn't all bad news in our nation and some really amazing things are happening. And summertime is actually one of those special times when organizations nationwide are serving the next generation. Great summertime camps and initiatives are being rolled out all across Canada in various communities. And one such organization that we actually partner with directly doing so is Red Zone. Red Zone serves the next generation by bringing together professional athletes to coach kids and pour into their lives. Well, here today to discuss it and the great impact that it's having is Sammy Robinson. I know this is going to be an encouraging show today. Thanks for being with me. Let's get to it. Red zone is essentially what happens when you go down the field. Like right now, we're progressing down the field. Just in life, you will progress down the field. And oftentimes, you have opposition coming against you. What does it look like to be a champion? And how does it look to move as a champion? A message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And hear from some of the greatest champions at the highest level in the NFL about how God has been so prevalent and so important in their life. There was supposed to be a storm come over this stadium, all right? It was supposed to be some rain that was supposed to come out today. We prayed, and the rain has not come, all right? Because we've prayed for that. I know that I can read the Bible at late at night and make sure that I go to sleep knowing that God is watching over me and my family. I serve a God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's always consistent. So what I've learned in the midst of the storm that you're going into your life, like, you got to continue to pray. So regardless of what you do, be intentional and make sure that you keep God first. Or even when it rains outside, the sun is still out. It may be cloud cover, above those clouds, the sun is always there. Understand that, that next storm you face, that giant, get excited for it. This is how I fight my battles. God, yes, he can bring you out of the storm that you're going through, right? But our God is so good that he can bless you while you're in the storm. Scream like, bring it on, tell God I trust you, and I'm going along for the ride, amen? What does it mean to move from the place where you are almost on the cusp of winning, almost on the cusp of scoring, to crossing over that line? And more importantly, who's that person who's gonna get you over that line, which is a relationship with God? Well, this is such a treat. One of our most favorite humans in all of Canada, none other than Sammy Robinson, Voice of Revival. Thanks for joining me, Sammy. Hey, Faye Thank you. This is so much fun. Well, you are, are no stranger to our supporters, especially, you know, uh, it was a couple years ago now, maybe a year and a half ago, that we actually did another show called Praying for You during the COVID season. 
praying for Canadians from sea to sea while they were in lockdown. And uh, you and your wife lead a vibrant nonprofit organization from sea to sea. Now doing sports outreaches, now that we can gather again <laughs> and um, just being such a blessing to the community there in Alberta. So why don't you catch our viewers up, Sammy, with some of the good news of what's happening in our nation, specifically with your initiative called Red Zone. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, Faitin, thank you uh, for allowing me to join you here today. I It is always a pleasure uh, to be with you. And regarding Red Zone, you know, actually, it's funny that we're talking about this because I, the first uh, couple that I talked to about Red Zone was you and Rob. And it was the whole idea as, you know, we had this long stretch with COVID and everyone indoors. We had this desire uh, to be able to host uh, football camps for kids where they could get outside, they could meet uh, professional athletes. And so for this last Red Zone event, we had NFL coaches, um, some of them very famous coaches, and uh, players uh, that actually won a Super Bowl. And so they came to Calgary, Alberta. We rented McMahon Stadium, which is like super cool. I don't know about you, as a sports fan, Calgary St. Peters uh, play in that stadium. And and uh, for any kid, it is their dream to play, you know, where their heroes are. And, uh, and so we, we did this in June, just a couple of weeks ago. And we had about 200 and what was it? 220, 225 kids from all over Alberta, which was really awesome. We had people driving some, some of them four, five, six hours to be a part of the camp where they, they learn football skills, but not just football skills. I think one of the biggest things uh, in this last season is having fun and also receiving hope. And, you know, throughout the event, uh, it was it was one of those things, Fateen, where, you know, when kids were getting mentored by some of the top level coaches and, and getting encouraged uh, by our volunteers and our whole our whole staff, you could just see just the 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 face of these kids getting really, really uh, encouraged and touched with hope. It was awesome. Wow, so powerful, so positive. And, you know, Sammy, I remember you saying that a lot of these kids were really impacted because they don't really have a dad active in their lives. And this might have been the first time in, in quite some time that many of them had really strong, affirming um, male input uh, in their world. Uh, talk about that for a moment. Yeah, like, so when the kids came to our camp, one of the things that we wanted to do was we wanted to ask the kids, hey, are your parents here? You know, we, we would love to, you know, uh, get your parents a part of what's going on. I know there was a, a few parents in the stands, but when we were talking to the kids, what we found was, I would say almost four out of five of the kids would say to us, you know, this is so awesome that I get to connect with these, you know, these coaches and, and, you know, these strong male coaches. And, and, their reasoning was a lot of them said that their dad wasn't active in their life. Not saying that necessarily he wasn't at home, but he wasn't participating in, in some of these ventures. And so you could see with these kids that positive, like male role models speaking into their life. It was like uh, just a refreshing for these kids where I remember watching one kid, he made an amazing catch. And, uh, you know, he, he got up and the first thing that he was looking for was, where's the coach? And I remember when his eyes locked with the coach and the coach said, hey, good try, good, you know, good catch. It was like he just, he won the verbal lottery. Like he just, he just, you know, um, ooze out all of this excitement and joy. It was fantastic. Amazing. Now, you have shared another testimony with me off camera about a dad who had a, a really high-level athlete, and they had gone to a lot of sports camps, and he said to you, like, I've never been to a camp like this. What was that about? Absolutely. So one of the kids that came, his son was one of the top quarterbacks in Alberta football. So, you know, at that level, you're traveling, you're doing a lot of different camps and you're trying to you get, you know, get your kid as much teaching and, and, you know, exposure in his sport as possible. And I remember when the dad came up to us, he said, listen, he's like, I know you don't know who I am, but he's like, my son is one of the top quarterbacks uh, in Alberta football. And he and myself are so amazed by the atmosphere that is in these camps. And he said, you know, when you usually go to these camps, sometimes they can feel a little, little aggressive in their teaching and, and they're not necessarily always that positive. And usually it's very competitive. And he says, 
being here, everyone is excited about each other. And there's such a, you know, this camaraderie that is taking place where it's not about trying to, I want to be the best player in the camp, but it's actually about all of us, you know, doing well, all of us celebrating each other. And I think that really hit home for a lot of athletes and their parents where they could definitely feel, okay, there's something different about what's going on here. This isn't the typical camp, even though, you know, we have the typical X, you know, the exercise for the kids, you know, a lot of the things were the same, but you could tell that the atmosphere was different. Amazing. And what's the response from the community been? I, I know you've got the eyeballs of a lot of the guys in the business community and also the political community. What's their feedback been? It was so cool. Like Fatine, um, how could I say this? The We had so many amazing partners for this event. And uh, I was, um, you know, I think maybe shocked would be an understatement just of how supportive the city of Calgary came behind the event, but also how encouraged they were after. So we had management uh, from the stadium uh, come to us and say, listen, like, you know, they host a lot of events, like a lot, a lot of events. And so they get lots of different characters coming in and they said uh, to us that their staff had never been more appreciated during the event. They said there was such a, culture of like honor where people were honoring each other. There wasn't anyone demanding things. Our, our, I was so proud of our team. Fate team. We had 135 volunteers again from all over Alberta. And you know, when there was garbage on the, you know, on the ground, you know, we didn't wait for, for one of the staff members of the stadium to pick it up. We made sure that everything was done well and in order. And they told us this was one of the best events that they have ever hosted in the whole career the same now that stadium's been around for a long time so i think just the test like the testimony of doing things well with excellence but also like honoring our community when people come in we want them to feel valued we want them to feel like yes this is focused on the kids but if you're here too we want to serve you well as you know we want to serve you well and so i know that after this event uh, they actually asked us if we would be willing to host it again and them to participate even more. And so what a great way, you know, being a blessing going in and, and being blessed going out. You know, and it's it's really amazing because you are a faith-based organization. You're a Christian organization. And one of the things you do in the Red Zone uh, event is that you tend to the spiritual needs of the kids. There's a inspirational message at some point by one of the athletes, as I understand it, an opportunity for people to start a spiritual relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. And so how does that go over in light of this being a community event in this uh, climate throughout our nation that we see that it is is kind of tends to be a little bit anti-faith, at least in the in the public forums. Absolutely. And, you know, that was something, Faitine, we had to, like, you know, really process as a team because one of the things that we don't want to do is we don't want to say, hey, we're offering this one thing and then, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to throw in, you know, the spiritual component. And and so what we, we've always decided as a team is that when we host Red Zone on all of our marketing – it says faith, family, football. And what we felt like that we were supposed to do was we wanted to be upfront and we wanted people to know, listen, we, we all know that we're struggling. And, and I know there's, you know, when I think one of the most touching things, Fateen, for me, and, um, you know, forgive me if I cry here, I, uh, as we were pr talking with the kids and the, and the players were, you know, giving an inspirational message, talking about, you know, how they themselves have, you know, overcome certain things in their life through their, their walk with Jesus Christ and how much spirituality meant to them. Um, we, we just did a really quick question, like how many kids suffer with anxiety, suffer with depression? Like 18, 90% of the kids put their hand up and it just, it hit me of, what we've come out of in this last season and just some of the voids that we're feeling and, and just the people looking, young people looking for answers. And so we wanted to create this safe space where parents knew, kids knew we were going to talk about, you know, the reason or one of the reasons here of why we're here. We, yes, we want to bless the community. Yes, we want to serve the community. But we also want to talk about for us, the most important thing was 
our, our spirituality and our relationship with Jesus because we know that there's so many times in our lives that Jesus Christ has helped us. You know, Faitine, I think one of the exciting things as well that took place is as the guys were sharing their testimonies and, you know, really talking about their, their spiritual journey with Jesus Christ, we gave an opportunity for kids to be able to come along that journey. And I think what was so profound was over 85% of these kids, they stood up to say, I want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to walk, you know, in this place of, of figuring out who Jesus is. How do I follow him? And it was so, so powerful. That was 185 kids that said yes to going on this journey with Jesus Christ. And it was so amazing. And so when these kids heard about this, and it wasn't like, I, I appreciate the authenticity where even the guys, as they were sharing, they're saying, hey, like, it's not that Jesus just removes all struggle and it's just, you know, rainbows and unicorns and everything's just going to be great. But there's times where life is hard and there's times where things don't go according to plan. But there's an inner strength that's found in your spirituality that you don't get from anything else. And seeing these kids, you know, responding to a very heartfelt, real conversation that I really believe society needs today, that we can't, we can't remove spirituality out of our conversations. It is so needed because these kids, they're looking for this. How do I get peace? How do I get hope? How, where do I find joy? And to be able to talk about this and for guys to give, you know, their testimony of, listen, this is what it's done for me. And to give that opportunity for them to experience the same. Faithine, it was so powerful, like just absolutely amazing uh, what God did in those moments. Well, it's so encouraging, Sammy. And one of the reasons we wanted to feature this report today is because we've had the privilege of partnering with you uh, through our financial partners. We always give 10% of whatever comes in. Uh, we give it out to another organization that's doing great work in our nation. And you were one of the ones that we were able to partner with this summer. And so that is so exciting. So thank you to all of our viewers who um, support us so that we can stand with incredible adventures like this. But Sammy, what would be your work word to people who are listening right now. Maybe they've got an idea of something to do in their community, uh, something to bless the community, a faith-based initiative perhaps as well. What's your word to those people watching right now? I, I would say this is that uh, you never know what you have until you try. I actually learned that from you, Faith Team and, and Rob. You, you guys and, and you really encouraged me. I remember sharing this with you about this idea of, of really um, creating these events for middle school and high school students uh, where, where we could intersect sports and, and faith. And it's turned out to be something way beyond what I could think or imagine. And I, I, I would just say to those that are watching today that you have a dream, um, don't just let it be a dream. Like take some practical steps, you know, maybe that's looking at booking a, a certain venue, or maybe that's talking to a few people. I think sometimes um, one of the things that we need to do in this is season is not be afraid to share our dreams, because I really believe we're in a time where society is looking for people to dream those God dreams, those, those really, you know, out of the box things. And, and maybe just maybe, that's the idea that could catalyst something incredible for your community. And, and I would just say, go for it. You know what? The truth is you're going you're gonna to make some mistakes. You're going to learn on the way, but you'll never know the opportunity until you take that step of faith. And so I just would encourage that to all the viewers today. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Sammy, for your encouraging words. It's always awesome to chat with you. And on that note, we're now going to show some highlights from Red Zone. Until you kind of hone it in and just know who God is and to turn to him, have conversation with him and let him just speak over you and sit in that peace that he gives you, there's nothing like it. We love Canada and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit fayteen.tv or call 
844-0844 to donate today. We're not trying to hide anything. We want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the meantime, we're going to play a little football. For those who stand and actually take the step and commitment to give their life to Jesus, we're going to cheer for them like they just won the Super Bowl. Come on. Yeah. These men and young women for giving their life to Jesus. Come on, they coming. They coming. Let's cheer for them. Amen. Come on. It's a big deal. Come on. Come on. They still coming. In the morning, as I'm coming out of my REM sleep, I sit there and I instantly start praying, thanking God for whatever it may be, whatever name comes up, whatever situation. And then when I put my feet on the ground, it's, Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Because every day that we wake up, there's a decision, a choice, and consequences. Every day that we wake up, decisions, choices, and consequences of what we do. And so that's the first thing I do is try to get up, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? When I get in my office, the first thing I do is put my face on the ground and that's just asking Jesus to, Lord, whoever comes in this office, not my word, I don't want to give my word, but I want to give whatever it is that you have for whoever that specific person is. I love people. Um, there's people in the audience right now that are going to watch this. That's me. That was me. Uh, when I talk to my players and even my kids, I always, I always vow my sons, they won't be who Ray was when he was younger. It won't happen. And so that's when I'm excited to let everyone know no one's perfect in here. I always share with people like, don't use God's name in vain. Don't use Jesus' name in vain. And it's not that the name loses power. You don't realize the power that you're not using, basically. Uh, so when, it come, when, I, when I think about how powerful the name of Jesus is, it is Jesus in the morning. It is Jesus in the afternoon. It's Jesus at night. It's Jesus when I'm driving that car and this other car is getting ready to hear me and I, hit me and I can yell out Jesus and that car goes the other way or my car swerves so we don't get hit. Like, it's power in that name. It's power in, you can go around and, I mean, speak the name of Jesus over and over again. Call on him as much as you, as much as you can, as much as you want. Do not use that name in vain. Like, if you, if you saying Jesus, you need him. People have to realize that there's no situation that you have going on in your life that he, he, he's not gonna respond to. Like, he, he loves you. He's wrapping you in his arm. He wants you to call on him. But at the end of the day, like, go ahead and pray right then uh, and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Uh, and like I always say, people are, you're gonna have the opportunity to be able to share with somebody. The Holy Spirit is gonna push you and lead you to do it. Uh, you may not have the words collectively ready to go, but once you get to that point and it's time to share, God will bless you uh, with the words to be able to share. Uh, one of the things that God really spoke to me is not trying to operate out of a place of offense. You can, you can be upset but if you operate out of a place of offense, you're not giving the full expression of redemption of God's heart to people. And so I spoke, I did a lot of interviews. I spoke on a lot of news stations about, about this topic. And one of the things was, is when you have a kingdom mentality, your mentality is to bring healing and strength to an ongoing issue, not to want to take sides and be like, hey, this is wrong, this is wrong. We all know there's injustice. We all know that there's wrong. We all know that people have been wrongly injustice. I mean, from not only the black community to the indigenous people community, the Asian American community, you can go down the line. I mean, even the white community, there was a lot of white shaming going on, but none of that's of God's heart. God's heart is of love and he's trying to bring unity. And so if you can take that position in the midst of being hurt, or feeling despair, you can actually bring a sense of balanced heart and balanced mindset that, hey, there is hope if you really to do it from this lens right here and to have it from a kingdom lens. God recently has been talking to me about that. It's like just being bold in my faith, right? Uh, especially in today's world. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to go out and be like, you know, repent or you're going to hell. It's, it's like just showing love to somebody or being kind to somebody um, and or being there for someone, um, but just being really intentional with, with that, with a person and, and showing God's love. Well, we gotta love. We gotta love. I think society everywhere across, we're, we're pushing Jesus out. We're, we're, we gotta run to the, the, the throne 
that's gonna fix everything. You know, it's you turn on TV, you see the politicians, and it's just man don't have answers. The answer is Christ. You want to fix stuff, it got to be Christ. And uh, we were born, everybody's born and created to worship God, to walk with God. So if we're not walking what we were created to do, it's going to be chaos. And uh, us believers, you know, I'm I, I trying to encourage everybody because we need one another. We need to fit, uh, feed off each other, but it's game time for us. You know, man is scratching their heads. They don't know what to do, so it's time for us to show up and uh, love them, love one another. And, uh, you know, that was God's whole plan as a church. You know, you study back in Acts. The, the world is going to come in how we interact with each other. They're going to want our God the way they see the love that we show towards each other. So we need to start there loving, you know, the church. You know, there's so much divide inside. No, it's not. We need to put those things away. We need to love one another and walk with each other. And the world will see that and they, they will want to gravitate to it. But I would start with love. Like, we, we got to love people. If with different political views or whatever, you know, lead people to Christ. We can't just throw John 3.16 at them. We got to love them. You know, we got to help them. We got to serve them. And uh, that's how we, we will fix, you know, one block at a time. I never in a million years thought I would be where I'm at. I never in a million years thought I would get over the pain and the things that I went through as a child um, and be here, you know, being able to claim God's name and victory and be joyful and uh, thankful. These challenges and things that you go through in life are only here to make you stronger, as awful as they can sometimes be. But God is going to be there for you and with you as you go through your life. I can have just a crazy hectic day and just kind of like be at wit's end and I can put on some praise and worship music I can open my Bible and he brings a peace that nothing else can give um, he brings a joy that nobody can give I mean I love my husband I love my children but oh my god <laughs> he is he is able to cover you in such a way that so many people try to seek and find in other things, but until you kind of hone it in and just know who God is and to turn to Him, have conversation with Him, um, and let Him just speak over you and sit in that peace that He gives you, there's nothing like it. Going from a depressed child to where I'm at today, I can't do anything but thank God. Thank you for joining me again this week. I hope you were encouraged by the program and the testimonies that we shared. If you want to watch the show again, perhaps share it with your friends, you know where to find us. Simply go to fayteen.tv to find this program as well as other previous episodes. If you want to continue to see shows like today's on air, we would so appreciate your support so that we can keep at it. We say it on a regular basis, but it's worth mentioning again. As a nonprofit TV show, we're only able to continue because of the generous gifts of our monthly partners and our regular donors. You're the ones that make this happen week by week. So if you'd like to become a monthly partner, perhaps increase your monthly giving or give a special gift today, we would be so incredibly grateful. Just go to fateen.tv to give securely online or give our team a call at 1-866-844-0844 and someone will be waiting and honored to take your call and even pray for you and your personal prayer needs. Don't forget that we also have a few ways that you can ensure you never miss a show. Sign up for our email list at fateen.tv or download our smartphone app there as well. And every time a new program is posted, you will be notified. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you next week.